today I'm going to show you how to paint Walk in the Rain and I'm going to use an 11 by 14 canvas but you can use a larger 16 by 20 um, and I do have pre-sketched canvases available on the Sociable Art website. You can purchase those for me to pick up um, or you can uh, purchase a rolled canvas to be sent to you that has um, the figure sketched on so that you won't have to worry about um, getting that correct. Um, I uh, have painted the background of this uh, prior to sketching on the figure and if you purchase a uh, pre-sketched canvas, yours will come with the background painted as well. Um, and that just gives you a good base for all the dabs of color. And I have painted the background with like an aqua color, but you could really use any shade, medium shade of blue, either mixing from cobalt blue or from aquamarine. Um, this is the aqua blue that I used. You could use turquoise too. And so the turquoise and aqua, you can mix yourself just using um, a blue and mixing yellow with it and adding white. And depending on how much blue you add, how much yellow, you'll get these different shades. Um, I've added a lot of colors in my palette. You do not need to use this many colors to get a good effect. You could have just a few simple primary colors and mix most of the colors from those. Um, and I just liked, I just wanted to have a lot of variety of shades in here. So just know that you don't need all these and you can mix a lot of these colors yourself and you can do that in advance. And then for this painting, you really only need um, two brushes. If your background's already painted in, I mean, for painting the background, you'd want a big brush. But if you've already painted it in, then you just need a liner brush, a skinny liner brush of some type, and then a brush with a square end on it, like a medium-sized brush with a square end. I think this is a number four. And so one of those would work just to do the dabs for the rain in the background. So I'm gonna start out by using this square brush and just using white paint and just filling in around the figure a little bit so that there's kind of this um, kind of like a glow under the um, umbrella and around her so that she stands out from the kind of busy canvas we're gonna create with all the dabs of color. So I'm just gonna fill in around the figure and eventually I'm going to put in some kind of uh, some square brush strokes that will kind of complement the rain that we're going to put in the background. If you need to switch to a smaller brush like the skinny brush to get around this figure, if you're having difficulty getting close to the figure, you can use another skinnier brush. Um, also, we can just correct this later. If you get some st brush strokes and paint into the figure, you can just correct it later when you fill in the figure with color. So we're only gonna take this white down to where her boot touches the pavement. That's about as far as we want to go. And for the edges where we're just gonna fade it into the canvas, I'm just gonna do some brush strokes like this. And you see that I'm turning my brush different directions. If you want to, it would be a whole different look if you want to have all of your brush strokes go in the same direction. It will just be a different look and I always encourage you to make the painting your own. So while I'm instructing you to do it the way that I painted it, step by step, that does not mean that you can't just kind of put your own spin on it. I would love it if you would do that and just make it look different and make it your own painting. But if you want it to look just like the one that I did, I'm just telling you uh, what kind of brush strokes to do to do that. If you uh, decide that you want to do the brush strokes all the same direction, you could go like this and they would all be the same direction, but I'm turning mine like this. And you might wanna add some more white to this as it dries to get some really white areas, but for now this will do. If I had some more heavy bodied acrylic, then I wouldn't even need to put a second coat on some of these areas. What I'm using today is a student grade acrylic, which means it doesn't have tons of pigment and it's kind of thin. Um, it's more economical to use, especially if you're a beginner. 
you can really use any acrylic paint for this. You can use the kind that you buy in the craft store that's in the little bottles if you don't want to buy a lot. You know, the Apple Barrel and Joann's and all those kind. Right now, I am adding some white up to this top right corner of the canvas. Also, there are going to be two areas where there are supposed to be sort of like street lights. So there's a circle there for that. And then around that area, I am turning my brush. So I'm using the skinny side of the brush and just doing some um, circling lines around that to kind of show like it's it, the light is reflecting around. When I do these white areas up here in the top right, I'm also putting some on the edges of my canvas. I like to put it on the sides too and wrap everything all the way around so I can just hang it without a frame. Now the reason I'm putting more of the white up here in this corner is I want this corner to be the lightest area of my canvas and then it'll be sort of a medium shades of blue over here and it'll be darkest down at the bottom. So I'm not gonna put much white down here, but I am adding quite a bit up here on the top and a little bit over onto this side. And any color that we use, like right now I'm using the white, eventually I'll probably go back to the white because this is, this is gonna be a lot about layering, lots of different layers of color. You don't want a lot of your base canvas color to show through. So I'm gonna go right up to the umbrella. And sometimes I even, I don't mind going into it like that because I can cover that up later. And I don't want it to look like my brush strokes have avoided touching this shape because you'll be able to see that. If you just have all your uh, shades stopping, you know, uh, centimeter from the side, it looks kind of awkward. So you might have to eventually just kind of put some dabs that overlap into there. Okay, so I can add more white later. I'm not done with the white, but this is what I'm adding for now. Okay, so that's enough for right now, and then I'm gonna switch to the next shade. I like to put the um, green areas in next. They're supposed to be sort of like trees in the background. And I'm gonna start with a darker shade and I'll add lighter shades over the top of it. I don't want it to be too dramatic. Um, so I have a dark green in here. This is, I think, a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna lighten it up. And if you don't have a green, you can mix green. I'm um, using a primary blue and adding ye yellow to it. So I've got this and I'm just gonna start dabbing that on as well, remembering to turn my brush. There's really not a whole lot of shape to this. It's just more I'm putting it in this area. And also on the side a little bit. I'm gonna add some other shades of green in here as well. This is just the base coat. And the reason I'm using this small canvas is I can cover a whole lot more ground more quickly and the video won't be super long, but if you're using a big a big canvas, you're probably gonna have to pause this every once in a while because you'll have more ground to cover. One thing you wanna make sure of is that you don't get too patterned looking. By that I mean you don't want to space your um, dabs of color so evenly that it looks polka dotted. I've seen that happen before. It's like something that we apparently naturally do is we want to create a pattern. So you kind of have to fight it. And what I mean by that is like, you don't want to have it like this, one here, one here. They're all equally, completely equally spaced. We want it to look like some of them are gonna be touching. They're gonna be randomly placed. That's the whole idea of this painting, at least mine. Now, if you want to do it differently to make it your own and you want everything evenly spaced, that's perfectly fine. But if you want it to look like this one, then we're gonna randomly place these. And um, some of your colors can overlap a little bit into your white. That's perfectly fine. You want a few of them to do that. And I gotta leave some space to do some other shades of green in here as well. And notice that some of my dabs are touching. We want them to. And wrapping around the sides. Now I'm going to 
add, uh, since this is still wet, I don't want to add the second shade of green. You see that I'm moving around the canvas so that I give each area time to dry. The acrylic paint dries very quickly. So we'll be able to move back to that area v soon. And it doesn't matter if some of these smear a little bit into each other, that's kind of a nice look. But I'm gonna move down to the bottom of the canvas. And you can see that this is the area where we want the wet pavement. It's gonna be kind of darker down here, it's um, pavement. So I have some black paint. I wanna use that a little bit sparingly and I want to add blue to mine. So I'm going to take some of my cobalt blue, mix it with some black, and it's gonna create a very dark, like a navy, navy blue, but almost looks black. And I'm gonna add that on there. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my brush and I'm kind of zigzagging it and I'm using the edge of it, not putting it flat on the canvas, but kind of using the edge so I get a kind of thinner line. And if your paint isn't flowing very well, if your paint's kind of thick and you're just not getting it to flow, you can dip your brush into the water and add just a little bit of water to your paint and then it will flow more nicely. You won't run out of paint and have the canvas showing through as much. So I've added some of that on there and now I'm gonna go back and add some straight blue, straight cobalt blue. Once you dip your brush in the canvas, you can always kind of flatten it out on the edge of the palette. And I don't really wanna go above the boot. Just gonna add that in. Wrap it around the sides as well. It's okay if you blend the black into it. Getting the sides. Don't worry about the bottom yet, but don't forget to paint it at the end. Sometimes I forget that. I have all these canvases that don't have any paint on the bottom. And you're gonna add more detail, reflections, and everything like that on the canvas later. So I know it doesn't, doesn't really look like wet pavement yet, but have faith, it's going to eventually. I'm just gonna go over the bottom of that boot because I want the line to kind of continue on and not be just suddenly stopped. Okay, so that's enough of that for now. And now I'm going to move on to adding some more shades up here. So I have several different shades of blue I can use on the top of the canvas. I wanna add white to my blues. I don't want any really dark colors up here. We're saving the dark colors for the bottom. So anything up at the top, I'm gonna to add white to and make it a lighter shade of what I've got. So here's um, a turquoise that I'm adding in. And I added white to this turquoise shade. Don't be afraid to overlap other dabs of color. In this corner, we really want to stay pretty light. I'm kind of staying away from this area because I want that to be really light. You need a lot of these dabs, so you can kind of move quickly if you want to. Don't overthink it. Don't forget to get some on the edges. And you can have a few of these and your bush area too. You don't wanna do a lot of these right now. You can add more of these later into the bush because it'll look more like, once we develop the bush more, then the rain will kind of be on top of it. So don't do many in this area right now. And then I'm just gonna switch to some other shades of blue to add in here. So this is the aqua. Same color that I did in the background, but a darker shade of it. You can mix aqua by 
mixing blue, a primary blue and yellow and white. And you just kind of have to play with the amounts of each um, color and see what shades you can get. So eventually we don't want many or much of the background to show at all. That is our goal. And we want to have overlapping colors. See, I'm doing the darker aqua over here. And then if I wanna add more, more over on this side, I'm gonna to need to lighten it up a little bit. I don't want it the exact same color as the background though. I want it to show up a little. losing my lightness a little over here, but it's okay because I can go back later and add more white into it. So I've got a couple of different shades. I'm going to try one more shade, maybe um, white mixed with the aquamarine blue, and that's going to get this kind of a, a purpley blue. Let's see if I like that. Yeah, I like that. That's just another shade to add in just for a little variety. You can make a darker shade for lower parts of the canvas. That one's a little bit dark. That color would be good down here, this darker aquamarine purpley shade. So I'm adding the second darker aquamarine purplish shade down at the bottom of the canvas. Some of it is overlapping onto the pavement. And then switching back to a lighter shade, add a little bit more up here and get some on the edges of the canvas too. I'm going to create a really light shade of it to add over here. Okay, now I wanna add a little bit of straight blue. Add some of that down here, the darkest color, which is the straight blue. I'm adding some dabs down here at the bottom to kind of blend the pavement into this bush area. Overlapping the pavement as well. Putting it on the side too. Just a little down here at the bottom where the pavement is. You know, some of my dabs of color have some brush strip showing. I really don't want that. I mean, you should have a brush that's good enough that it's not going to show brush strokes. This brush has been through a lot. It's probably been used by hundreds of people in class. So, you know, that's why I'm getting some of these uh, the brush strokes on the end of my dabs. You don't really want that, but I'm not going to be picky about it today. And this other brush I have might be a little bit better but it's maybe too big let's see eh, that's pretty good see now not so much of the brush strokes and i like that okay i don't want to use too much of this darker shade of blue up here on the top so the top is my lighter area maybe just a little a few dabs Some over here. And 
And then I can create a slightly lighter shade of this by adding white to the color I was using. On my painting, I just want to have as many different shades as I can and a lot of overlapping so that there is hardly any canvas showing through by the time I'm done. Don't worry about the bush areas yet. We're going to get back to that. Okay, let's see if there's any other shades of blue we haven't used yet. I mean, I have this straight turquoise that I haven't used down at the bottom. So I'm gonna bit a few, few strokes of that down at the bottom. Maybe a little bit of it up here. And then I'm going to switch back to the aqua that I used to do the background. And I'm going to put some of that back in on top because now that we've covered most of the background, you can't see any complete dabs of that color. So I'm gonna go back and add some of that on top. Just a little on this side, more on this side. See how we're covering up all the original canvas. Just covering everything with multiple dabs of color. Don't forget the sides. I keep saying that because I can't tell you how many times I have forgot to completely cover the sides. I always have to check at the end. Even adding some of this dabs of this background color into the white area. Okay. Maybe a little more around here. Do you know I honestly completely forgot in the original that I had another street light over here. Kind of don't want to add it now. I could. Hmm. Well, okay, we'll add it against my wishes. I just want it to look like the original. So that, so really, um, probably should add this at the beginning. Not ideal to do it the way I'm doing it backwards now because I'm going to smear some of these blue shades into it, which is not what I wanted. You don't really have to have one here. It's your painting. You decide. So I just did some circles of that uh, aqua color that I did my background in, and then I'll add some white. We'll have to go back to this and add some more uh, layers of color. Um, I'm gonna switch now back to the white because that was what we originally started with, and I wanna make sure it didn't get lost in here under these colors. So I'm adding it back to make it appear more dramatic. 
And I'm gonna put some around here and make this wider. To wait for this to dry before I can really make this white show up in this area. I'm going to go back, add some of these dabs of white. Now that this area is dry, I can make some of it whiter. Okay. Now to go back to our bushes, gotta add some other shades of green into this area where the greenery is. So you can create other shades of, of green by just by adding more yellow to your green or more white. I had already mixed mine. So that's not a whole lot different from what I've got on here, but it's a little different. So I'll start with that, a medium shade of green. Don't forget the sides. Now, if you're picking up uh, wet shades of blue, you can just clean your brush and just hit that area again later. Like I just picked up some blue there. So I just wipe my brush off and I'll just put a second coat on there later. I'm doing a little bit lighter shade too here. Some overlapping into the white area. And then there will be a few random uh, squares up here. Just a few. Don't want to overdo it. Maybe a real nice couple really light ones, little light dabs in this area. And then add some of those light ones into the greenery. Okay, maybe one up there. And then we're gonna um, add a little bit of the reflection under her. And then I'm gonna start with some of the white that has reflected on the pavement. So I'm gonna do a little bit of back and forth zigzags on either side of where her boot touches the pavement. Now behind her boot, there's going to be um, a black shadow, so I'm not I'm not really doing that area. You can have a little bit more of this in some other areas. Just zigzag with the skinny edge of your brush. And 
And then right behind the figure, I said there's going to be a black shadow where her boot is and her leg. So you can just kind of add that so that's a little darker there. Now there are a few dabs of your very dark blue, which looks like navy, in um, the bushes, in the lower part of the bushes. So I'm gonna add those now as well. Just a few, make this area nice and dark. And if you pick up any of the other colors, just wipe your brush off. Gonna make it more navy. It's, it's really appearing like it's black. So I want it to be kind of a navy. Okay, now we need to add a little bit more of a medium blue or medium to dark blue dabs into the bushes too. We don't really want to have much of the background color showing through. So I'm gonna take some of that cobalt blue. You can mix anything with it to make a medium blue, but I'm gonna mix some turquoise with it. Let's see if I get a color that I like. You can even add, so you could take this medium blue and add some green to it. I think that would be a nice thing. So you've got a green blue, I like that idea. So I'm creating a green blue. It's really looking more, I've run out of room on my palette, so I'm just using whatever surface I can find here to mix. I'm not getting a really great mix. You might need more than one palette with all these colors we're using. So I think that needs to be a little more blue. Right now it still looks too green. Well, as I said, I've run out of places to mix my color, unfortunately. Okay, so I've got a green and blue, and I added just a little white to it. that color. I'm not crazy about that. I'm not going to add much of that. Switching back to just adding um, some blue because I really don't, that color, color is just kind of too dull. Didn't have enough brightness to it. So going back to a shade of medium blue. I just want to cover those remaining areas of canvas that you showing through. If it becomes too blue, you can switch back to your green and add some color back onto it. You still want it to look like it's greenery. A little purplish shade there. Okay, and then I'm gonna probably switch back, add some more green back on top. Make sure that I haven't lost too much of that green look. And then I kind of feel like I add, need to add some white back to this area where I forgot to add the light. And 
maybe make this even wider here. A few white strokes down there. Now, I'm going to do some base coats on here before I do um, the lights. So, on the umbrella, obviously, well, let's actually, we're going to start with, with the black on the boots and the legs. And you don't have to do a whole lot of definition here. You can make this um, like a navy blue too if you want, like we've been using. It doesn't, it still looks kind of like black. So, I'm using the medium brush, but I have a pretty decent medium brush with, brush with a nice edge. But if you can't get this nice line with your medium brush, then you could switch to the skinny brush. And really, when I'm doing detail like this and lines, it's easier sometimes if you just lay your canvas flat for a little bit, just so you can get some better control. Also, I have a tendency to Hold my brush way too close up here because I really love sketching and I always feel like I want to hold a pencil. But really, you're supposed to hold your brush further at the end to get better control. I've just never been able to get myself to do it. Just telling you the right way. See, I mean, just the way I paint is always like I'm sketching. Maybe not the right way, you know, I am self-taught, um, but it's the way that I've always done it. It'd be very hard to change it now, and I don't know if I feel compelled to do it. So if you want to have any definition in those boots, you could take a little bit, you know, clean your brush a little bit, put a little bit of white on there, and just maybe on this one. So start putting a little white in and have it blend in with the black, and just put a little bit of definition so that it looks separate from the other boot. And you can just blend it as much as you want. I don't want it to show up that much. So maybe add a little more black in. Okay, so there's the boot. Now, Cleaning my brush really well, getting all that black out, wiping on paper towel, and then I'm going to add yellow into the coat. Now, see the yellow is kind of transparent, so you can kind of see the blue showing through. So for your first coat, you might want to add some white in with your yellow, either in your palette or as I just did on the canvas. Because if you add the white to the paint, it will make it opaque. And then it will cover up what's underneath it. It's okay if you get this shade into your umbrella. We're gonna fix that in a second. Careful not to smear the black from those top of the legs there into your coat. Though a little bit would be fine. I have a little bit of black in my some of my yellow in the original. Very carefully avoiding smearing that black because it's not dry yet. And then, while I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead, add some brush strokes of white, white mixed with yellow, a little bit of orange mixed with yellow, particularly, uh, particularly on this side of the coat, because this is my darker side. It's not gonna show up very well right now because it's wet. So it's just kind of absorbing. So I might I need to add some of that later. And then moving on to the umbrella, you can see that in the original, I did some really much darker areas and I'll, as I'm filling in, I'm gonna kind of darken and lighten areas. So I have my main red shade. And if you don't want to lose the ribs of the umbrella as you're painting, you can kind of avoid those areas. I just kind of go over them. It's just easier. But if you're worried about finding them again, you could just kind of go around them. So I'm starting with the just straight red, 
But while it's wet, I'm gonna be adding the other shades into it to lighten and darken. So I've got some straight red on here, but then I'm gonna add some black. Kinda of like to mix on the canvas a little bit, not all in the palette. Being very careful here using the edge of this medium brush. If you want to, you can outline a little with the with the, the skinny liner brush if it's easier for you. Just make sure those lines don't dry, blend them in before they dry, otherwise it'll look like quite outlined and not quite as natural. And so I'm using this dark shade to kind of show where the ribs of the umbrella are so that I will not lose them completely. And I'm just blending in by dabbing with the brush as I go. And then I can go back to red Got a little too much black in my brush, so I'm getting that out, and then I'm going back to the red. I don't want it to become too completely black. Every time I get too much black in, I'm gonna wipe off my brush. See how I can just kind of blend the colors as I'm putting them on? And then it's easier. If they're both wet, if the, wet, the black is wet and the red is wet at the same time, it's a lot easier. So here on this side, we're gonna have our lighter side. I'm gonna put a little white on here. Some black in the brush. I don't want gray, so I'm gonna rinse my brush. My water's dirty, but it shouldn't matter so long as I get that water out of my brush on the paper towel. So back to white. I don't want to have this completely white edge, so we kind of wipe it in. Now, in the original, I have this kind of peach shade in there too, and that's by letting there be a little bit of yellow in your white. So if you put some yellow in there, the more you put in, the more of the peachy color you're gonna get. So the light is kind of sh shining on top of this umbrella. If you work quickly enough, you can keep everything wet and it blends better. If it dries, like this area just dried for me, I'm gonna go back and add some wet red in there so I can blend it. You gotta pay attention to your brush strokes a little. Like I want them eventually to kind of, I want to show where these ribs are in the umbrella. So I need to make sure eventually that I change my brush strokes so that it kind of goes with the shape of the umbrella. Going back to the red. Okay, now since I'm approaching this light area, adding some white into the red. Don't worry, this does not have to be perfect because we're about to put dabs of color on it, which you can use to cover up the areas where the transitioning was kind of awkward. So that's the great part is that you can cover up any you know areas where you had trouble I've just added a line of red to show where the rib of the umbrella is. And then here, I need something a little darker. I'm gonna do um, black and red. And then in this side, it would have to be black to show up, I think. Oops, I got some blue, which is fine. I kinda like that. I don't like how it's showing up so well up there, but I'll just cover that with a dab of green. So on this umbrella, I'm going to mix some yellow and red and have some dabs of that dark orange. And some of these colors that you add, you want to have escaping from your umbrella and showing up in the sky around it. It's like almost like the colors of the umbrella are um, fading into the background. It's kind of disintegrating and 
because of, you know, if you shine a light on rain, the colors just kind of reflect all over. So that's what we're trying to do here. So I've added some of the red mixed with yellow and maybe we want some red mixed with a little bit of white. Have a few of those and put some on your umbrella as well. Maybe a couple over here. a little it's a little bit of a rough area that I did here Rough area, rough. and I just added a dab of color to make it not appear oh. a lot of white there we go I'm gonna add dab of that light light shade coming out from here as well okay um, now we need to um, switch to our yellow and while we're doing the yellow I don't want to forget this so don't forget Add a little bit more yellow to this figure now that it, we can add a second coat and it'll show up and maybe some white. Whoops, that didn't work. My white's getting really full of color. Some people are very neat with their paints and I am not. Look at my palette. Look at my white that I'm using and I'm still trying to, still trying to use it. I don't have a clean area in it. I know I said we were gonna use yellow, but then I got kind of sidetracked on adding this white in here. So disregard what I said. I'm now adding some little dabs of white. My white has just a pinch of yellow in it because my palette is so sloppy. I don't like to stop. I, I like to get it done, so um, I often work with not the optimal condition, like this palette being kind of a mess, because I have to get the painting done in one sitting or it will not get done. I don't know if you're like that or if you can leave it and come back to it. It's probably, it's probably better practice to leave it, look at it, come back to it when you're rested, but it's just not my style. Adding some more white around this, since we had to add it later, it's kind of not as white. And then a few more brush strokes of white randomly placed. I feel like these pieces of white are like um, the rain splashing up from the pavement and catching the light. And really, I haven't done this because I'm sitting here and I'm recording, but you should be getting up, taking a step back from your painting and seeing it from a distance. You should not wait to the end to do that, which is what I'm doing today because I'm sitting here videotaping. But you should really get up and take a step back, look at it because you will see it completely differently from a distance than you could possibly see it just sitting on top of it like this. And you don't wanna finish and then look at it and say, oh no, you know, so occasionally throughout the process you should be getting up and looking at it from a distance okay so now yellow and so you can have straight yellow in this in the area where the lights are or you can add white to it make it a lighter yellow I don't like to do perfect circles for those you can if you want to I like to just I think they would be the rain would kind of distort the shape and everything uh, adding a little white to my yellow here and just doing some dabs around the light. Very casual. Okay, then 
we need to add some yellow dabs into our background. So, because this light, it would reflect around as well, you could add a little bit of white into your yellow to make the color more opaque. I'm gonna have some on the umbrella, but be careful because your umbrella's probably, mine's not very wet, but yours might still be wet and you know, then you'll get orange, which is fine, but if you wanna get yellow, you might have to wait. Okay, a little bit down here, maybe one or two inside of the white area, the white reflection area. Maybe a couple down here at the bottom. Oh, I'm liking this. Some around this light. Maybe one here. Maybe another one on here. Oops, that one got kind of bogged down in the wet red. I need, I need to add another coat on there. We still need a little bit of orangey yellow. Mostly yellow with a teeny bit of orange added into the coat. And while we've got yellow, I mean, while we've got the orangey yellow, we want to add a little bit of that into the bush. It's just a nice little accent over on both sides. It's orange mixed with yellow. You don't want to put it on wet green. It makes kind of an ugly color. You might need to do two coats if you're putting it on top of dark blue. I've seen that my orange isn't showing up as orange as I want it to, so I'm gonna to have to go back and do a second coat, I think. here. Don't want to overdo it. Okay. Could put a little in the light if you want, just a teeny bit. Okay. So there's still needed a yellow reflection on the pavement because her coat would reflect on the pavement. So I'm going to get some yellow, mix a little white with my yellow so it'll show up better and flatten my brush on the side of the palette so I have a nice edge. So it'd be maybe about here. I mean, I'm gonna foreshorten this shadow so that it's not quite the same size as her, but might need to add a second coat to that because my uh, yellow is a little bit watered down, so it's not gonna show up very well. It's gonna, as it dries, it'll probably soak in a little. So I'm doing that zigzagging. And then I want to leave at the very bottom of my canvas, um, I want to put some red like the umbrella. It shows up very well at first, but usually um, when it dries, it's not quite as red. You know, I'm thinking it might be nice to have a red dab there. And then we'll balance it out. You always want to try to balance your colors. Okay. Now, if your yellow, you don't feel like it's showing up enough against the background, you could do just a very light like a little bit of outlining, I would mix black with yellow if you're gonna do that. You don't want it to show it very much. Okay, so now we have in the background um, some trees, some very thin tree branches. You do not need to put those in there. If you like the painting just the way it is and you don't think it needs those, you don't have to do it because I would hate for you to add them and then be like, oh no, I've ruined it, you know. So sometimes people have trouble with those branches. I would suggest 
that you practice on a sheet of paper or something before you do it on the canvas because it's kind of difficult. I could do like a whole class on how to get you know, nice thin lines, but the number one way to get nice thin lines is to have a good brush. So if you don't have a good brush, you might want to invest in one. They're not very expensive. One that you can get a nice fine line with. The ones I use in class a lot, some of you are familiar if you've been at my classes, they've been used a lot. So they don't often have a very nice edge. So half of it's probably not your fault if you can't get a nice edge. Um, it's not your fault. Okay, but before we do those tree branches, I also did just kind of the idea of some raindrops. And again, you need a nice edge to a brush or um, a nice liner brush. I like to use a nice edge on a medium brush to do this. I like to add a little bit of water into my paint on the palette so that it's thinner. And then I flatten my brush out so I have a very nice edge. And this I also would rather do with the canvas flat on the table uh, because I just feel like I have more control. Uh, but I, I've got to be able to let you see this. So you would just take this and you do a broken line like this. I'm holding my breath because it's, it's one thing, I, I have no problem doing this when I don't have um, a camera going, but all of a sudden my hand is like shakier now that I'm trying to do it with being on film, this is silly. And I always say in my classes that the best way to do like a straight line or a curvy or any kind of extended line is to do it quickly and confidently. The more confidence that you have and if you envision how you want that line to go first, you're gonna be more successful. If you try to go really slow, it has a tendency to be more crooked. You've got to have confidence in your ability to do it. And I'm just going to do a few drops in here too. Okay, so that, that's probably enough. I mean, you can do also some white lines. Like, I'll just show you what one might look like. It's not necessary. You've got to clean your brush pretty well. You might add a little water to your white, but then I don't know if your water's clean. Mine's pretty dirty. Uh, so I've got some white paint. Oh, no, I've got too much water in it. Hold on. And then flatten my brush out, same technique, and you would just do kind of these dabs of white. You might even do one that goes on top of the umbrella. So, you get the idea. Don't run through any wet paint when you're doing this. Like the yellow I know is still wet and if I, if I ran this line through there, I'd be streaking yellow through the sky, which wouldn't be so bad, but not what I was going for. Okay, so back to the black to do these lines for the trees. And you don't have to do these, they're optional. I would start somewhere down in here and make sure that you make your lines wavy and very a light touch so the bristles don't spread out. Again, I would rather do this flat on the can uh, have the canvas flat on the table. Easier for me. The key is don't make any of your lines straight. You want all these branch lines to be wavy. It'll look more natural that way. Have some branches. Okay, maybe a branch here. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Have one that goes straight up. I don't really want it to go through the light, so I'm avoiding that. And then I'm going to have one that kind of crosses over this one right next to it. Whoop, I didn't really want to go that far over. See, these, these tree branches are here because they kind of frame uh, the canvas. And that's kind of, it's kind of a nice look. 
some branches. Oops. You might want to have a paper towel handy. If you don't like some of your branches, you could, if you get them really quickly, you could wipe them right off maybe if they come out wrong. Okay, one more. I always hold my breath when I'm doing tree branches. Not a good idea. I'm gonna do my yoga breathing. Okay. Pretty happy with that. So I don't think I've forgotten anything. Hopefully I haven't because I'm about to sign off. Um, I could keep working on this one forever. This is one that you don't really have to be done. You could just keep layering and layering. I think the more layering that you do on this, it, the better it would be. So you can keep on working on yours if you want. Don't forget to paint the bottom. I almost forgot that. Sign your name, and I hope you enjoyed this. And you can check out um, other videos on uh, YouTube. And I also have a Facebook page, Instagram, um, and my website, sociableart.com. That's S-O-C-I-A-B-L-E dot com. And on Instagram, Social Art NC for North Carolina. And um, YouTube, Social Art Channel. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.